Okay, now I want to discuss a game between uh, Robert Byron and Bobby Fischer played in the U.S. Championship 1963-64. The opening is a Grunfeld D71, just continuing in the same uh, opening. The last game was a Grunfeld, so let's look at a, another Grunfeld opening. So the game start out with the D4, Knight F6, C4, G6. Uh, this could be a King's Indian defense, but the game continues. Um, G3, C6, Bishop G2. So it looks like uh, Byron's going to go for a Neo Grunfeld um, opening. So if you want to cover that, I have a video on the on the Grunfeld, which covers the basics of this opening. Um, then Bobby Fischer plays uh, on the third move, d5, and Byron uh, um, uh, liquidates the pawns with c captures d5s, and c captures d5, and now knight to c3. And you can see the general themes in the opening developing around controlling the center and sort of uh, you know competing for the light and the dark squares, and then the center here between the two players. So uh, uh, Fisher continues bishop to g7. And then uh, e3. Um, basically, this move helps to um, um, strengthen the center pawn here, but it does lock in the bishop on c1. So with that move, you can tell Byron's probably going to develop the, um, the bishop to uh, b2 or to a3. Fisher castles. Obviously, increasing the king's safety, um, and then uh, now, if you're playing a neo Grunfeld, you'd probably expect to see a move like knight to f3. But here, Byron plays knight on g to e2 with the idea of playing the uh, knight to f4, attacking d5. So now, Fisher plays knight c6, developing the knight. Also strengthening the uh, pressure on d4. Byron castles. And uh, Fisher will play b6. Obviously um, with the idea of playing the bishop to b7 or uh, a6. And before, sometimes you see in the Grunfeld the, um, the queen coming to here where it can attack. The, this pawn and attack this pawn, so getting rid of some of that business from white. So b6, like I said, Byron plays b3, like we mentioned before, with e3. Obviously, now the bishop has to come out to b2 or to a3. Now, Fisher plays bishop to a6, and now uh, pinning this knight. You know, the knight can't move or. Um, the, the bishop here on f1 would just be captured. Uh, Byron plays bishop to a3. Obviously now the uh, e7 pawn is pinned. Likewise, this uh, um, or this rook here would be captured. Fisher plays rook to e8. Now the pawn can move forward. Actually, now the pawn can even move forward with support from the rook. And now... Um, Byron plays probably one of the first moves. You know, it doesn't look like Byron's played anything really that's a mistake yet. Um, but here's his probably first inaccuracy, or at least the commentators can find, is uh, he's going to play queen to d2. Um, but uh, the move that's probably that is recommended and uh, by the commentators and also by my chess engine is... Uh, rook to c1. Uh, maybe I should back up and say um, with this move and the queen to d2, black plans on playing the move e5. And uh, if we move forward, like I said, with the queen, or if, uh, if, if white did not play queen e2, but instead played rook to c1, and then black played uh, e5, then Byron could just. Um, or play would continue, d takes e5, knight takes e5, and then uh, don't play if you're white, do not play 
knight takes d5 because you're going to lose a piece to knight takes d5, bishop takes d5, and then, oops, bishop takes e2, and white's going to lose a piece. But if you back up to this position, you want to play rook d2, because then uh, now black has to defend this pawn here on d5 with uh, bishop to b7, and then white can just bring rook to d2. So that should have been the move to stop Fisher from playing e5 originally, but let's back up to where he did play queen to d2, and now e5. Once again, actually, the correct move is rook to c1, which was not played, just to show you, because if now uh, e takes d4, e takes d4, and uh, we have sort of an even game, and the plan would be uh, White's rook's going to come to e1, and maybe White's going to play um, f3. The queen, black's queen's probably going to come to d7, and the rook's probably going to come, and this rook on a8's probably going to come to c8. But um, but after e5, Byron plays d takes e5, and then knight takes uh, e5. And now the problem for white is that this knight wants to come to d3, or is going to come to d3. And, uh, whoops. So how is white to play? Well, uh, actually, Byron made the move, rook on f to d1. And personally, that's probably the move I would have made, because it brings the rook to the center, attacking the pawn, gets rid of the pin. But that ends up being the exact wrong move. Probably the move I would have made. Um, but... The deeper move and correct move is rook on a to d1. And here's the reason why, is that um, well now if um, um, the pawn comes here, whoops. Or if the knight comes here, then the queen can just sidestep it and attack it. So if white does play rook on a to d1, then how it is uh, black to continue because it has this isolated pawn. And it looks like white is going to, uh, or yeah, is going to win it. Well, there's uh, two different moves. Looks like they can be tried. Um, one idea is to play knight d4, after which probably the moves knight takes e4, d takes e4, bishop takes e4, queen takes d2, rook takes d2 is going to happen. The other thing that can be tried is black could play queen to c8 threatening to come in on the white squares. And then if um, uh, white tries, knight takes d5, the play would probably continue, knight takes d5, bishop takes d5, rook to d8, and then f4, because uh, white wants to get rid of this uh, knight here because it's threatening the fork. But then black will just... Um, sacrifice the exchange or momentarily rook takes d5 queen takes d5 bishop to b7 and then white can play wants to queen takes d8 exchange off a bunch of material or can instead play back to d2 and then white gets this nice attack starting like this. 
So that ends part one of this video.